All right, let's do uh, the chapter three test. This was our first problem. It said find the average rate of change from minus one to two for this function. Now, if a function is changing, whatever it's doing, its average rate change is how would you get from the beginning to the end doing a constant even change, which basically says, what's the slope? So we'll find out what the slope is, what the point is at one end of the interval, minus one, by putting minus one into the equation, which is seven times negative one plus three times negative one squared. It's that's negative seven uh, plus three or negative four. So minus one. 4 is one of the points. Then we put in 2. 7 times 2 plus 3 times 2 squared. That would be 14 plus 12, which is 26. So the next point, 2, gave us 26. So the change in, oh, negative 4. So the change in y goes from negative 4 to plus 26, which is an increase of 30. As the x change from negative 1 to positive 2, which is 3. So we have a slope of 10, which is positive. So therefore, it's increasing. OK, number 2. There's a lot to number 2. It says first find the intercepts, and so to find the x-intercepts, we could factor, I'll do that over here, but we could also do the quadratic formula. They both give you x-intercepts. So the quadratic formula says x equals the opposite of b, so that would be negative 13, plus or minus the square root of b, so that's 13 squared, is 169, minus 4 times a, that would be positive, minus 24 times a minus 5, it's going to be plus 120. And all of this divided by 2 times the 6, which is 12. So we have negative 13 plus or minus the square root of 169 plus 120 is 280. 9 all divided by 12 and the square root of 289 is 17 so we have minus 13 plus or minus 17 over 12 negative 13 plus 17 is 4 which is 1 third that's one x intercept And negative 13 minus 17 is negative 30 over 12. And 6 goes into both of those and gives us 5 halves. So those are our x-intercepts. y-intercept, if I put 0 in for the x's, I get negative 5. Oh, I said I'd do the, this by factoring also. So it could be 6 and 1, for x, 6x six and 1x, uh, but I'm going to start with a 3x and 2x. And I got to get 13, and since it's a negative 5, they got a 1's got to be a plus and 1's got to be a minus, so there's going to be some adding and subtracting. So to get close to 15, I think if I take 5 times the 3, that's 15. And 1 times 2 would be 2. And if I subtracting, and I want a positive 13, I want a positive 15x and a minus 2x would give me 13x. If I set this equal to 0, I get 3x minus 1 equals 0, x equal 3x equals 1 adding one both sides and then divided by 3, and x equals 1 third. That's one of my x-intercepts. The other one would be setting 
2x plus 5 equal to 0, subtract 5, divide by 2, and that was my other x-intercept. Oops, forgot a parenthesis there. Okay, the line of symmetry. Now you can add the two x-intercepts and divide by 2 because it's right down the middle of them, but it's also just the opposite of b over 2a, this part of the quadratic formula. And it's a line, so we write x equals, it's a vertical line, negative 13 over 12. The other part of the vertex you would find by putting into the equation. And I could either put it in the factor form or the regular form. So if I put negative 13 twelfths in here, I get 6 times negative 13 over 12 squared plus 13 times negative 13 over 12 minus 5. So the vertex happens at negative 13 twelfths because it's on the center line and the y value is found by plugging that x value into the equation. So negative 13 squared is 169 and 12 squared is 144 but divided by 6 is 24 the negative makes squared is just positive and then we're going to get plus 169 over 12 minus 5 so uh, and this is minus 169 because the minus there. So these are equal, uh, or they're one's half, twice as big as the other, and opposite. So this one's twice as big as this because 12 are twice as big as 24. So negative so many 12s plus so many 24s is going to be equal to negative. Uh, 169 over 24 minus 5 and 24 goes in there let's see possibly six times 5 is 120 6 is 144 seven times 7 times 24 7 times 4 is 28, carry the 2, 7 times 2 is 14, 15, 16, 168, and I have 169, so it's 7 and 1 24th negative, negative, minus 5, so it's negative 12 and 1 24th. Okay. Intervals of increasing. Well, since this is a positive 6x squared, this is a right side up parabola. And so it'll increase from the vertex on. The vertex happens when x is negative 13 twelfths on up to infinity. And it's uh, just increasing, so we don't want to be equal, so we'd have to put the parentheses. Decreasing would be from the negative infinity up to the vertex. And so those are the intervals of increasing and decreasing. A lot to that. There's a lot of points on this first page. And then the last one here. So x-intercepts. That means y is 0. So I got negative 0.5 times the quantity x plus 2 squared plus 4.5 and I'm setting y equal to 0. So I will add, uh, subtract 4.5 from both sides. And to solve this, the next thing I'd have to undo is to multiply by negative 0.5 by dividing by negative 
yet I get 9 equals x plus 2 quantity squared. And if I take the square root of both sides, I get plus or minus 3 equals x plus 2. And if I subtract 2, I get minus 2 plus or minus 3 equals x. So my x-intercepts are minus 2 plus 3 is 1. Or minus 2 minus 3 is negative 5. There's my x-intercepts. My y-intercept, I put in 0 for the x, and so I get negative 0 0.5 times 0 plus 2 is 2 squared plus 4.5. Two squared is four. Half of four is two, and the negative of that is negative two plus four point five is two point five for my y intercept. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now the line of symmetry. So it's halfway between these, but I also know from this form that this is a parabola that's been moved two to the left. So the line of symmetry is x equal negative two. That's the vertical line. And the ver vertex is going to be minus two comma. And this has been moved to the left, flipped upside down, and compressed vertically, but it's up 4.5. So that's where the vertex is. This is an upside down parabola, so it's increasing from negative infinity all the way up to the vertex, which has an x-coordinate of negative 2, and you always do these thinking about the x. And from x equal negative 2, To infinity, this function is decreasing. And that's page one.